All right, so today I'm gonna to talk a little bit more about Charlottesville. This is a world This is a world premiere. This is a world So anyway, there was lots of feedback, but I have to say that there was a surprising number of comments where people were really questioning where the blame might lie in the events which took place on Saturday. I mean, it really depends on what you're talking about when you're talking about blame. If you're talking about, for example, the actions that an individual takes when they decide to drive a car into a crowd of people, the blame lies ultimately with that individual, right? Making the decision to do what it was that they did. You have people trying to question the city and whether or not they succeeded or attempted to prevent the event from taking place in the first place. You have people questioning the counter protesters saying that their presence is what ultimately incited the violence that took place. You have individuals questioning the plans to remove the statue in the first place saying that if they hadn't done that then there wouldn't have been a protest to begin with. So the Unite the Right gathering resulted in the death of three individuals and 20 or so individuals being severely injured. This doesn't even take into account the trauma from seeing friends, family, perhaps colleagues mowed down in this act of domestic terrorism. Now viewing the attack which took place on Saturday the 12th of August in 2017 as a terrorist act is not a radical perspective. You had Republicans who were also using similar language. You had Attorney General Jeff Sessions. You had Senators Mark Rubio, Cory Gardner, Orrin Hatch, Ted Cruz. You had Governor Chris Christie, Congressman Pete Sessions, and also before we get into a song and dance about how people were engaging in violence from all sides and that all of these forms of violence should be addressed equally, we have to look at the history of violence from radical groups in the U.S. There have been acts of violence associated with many groups, some that aren't even considered radical. We've even seen high schoolers take firearms to school and open fire on their fellow students. There are isolated incidents that can be attributed, as the president says, on all sides. However, by far the number of terrorists attacks on the U.S. killing U.S. citizens have been attached to groups connected to the far right and often attached to white supremacist groups. Back in June of 2017, the Huffington Post posted an article tracking the number of terrorist attacks on the U.S. They found that of the 200 terrorist attacks on the U.S., over half of them had been committed by right-wing groups. A little over 25% were performed by Islamic extremist groups. Left-wing extremist groups were responsible for about 10% of these attacks. I think we have to focus on where the real problem seems to lie. So while this administration continues to focus on the trans community, Islamic terrorism, or immigration, it ignores this one major threat to the safety of US citizens. Kind of in the same way the administration denies climate change. It's like we have a leadership that's completely out of touch with reality. A recent PBS report reveals that we have seen on average 300 attacks inspired by right-wing radicalism. That's every year. Although the death toll in these homegrown attacks are smaller, they're constant and they're tied to a history of such acts that puts their overall body count well over that of any other type of terrorist group, certainly beyond any foreign or Islamic threat. In fact, if we count the over 3,000 lynchings that have occurred in the United States from the beginning to the mid 20th century, we see that the greatest death toll from terrorism has come from white supremacists. And it has to be understood that the United States itself, in its laws, in its practices, was responsible for drafting and perpetuating the beliefs that are now held by these now called extremist groups. There certainly has never been a national effort to formally address what was so carefully and formally constructed over 300 years to continue the subjugation of Africans and native peoples. It was a 300 year tradition of violence that had as its purpose, the division of the labor class, the maintenance of ruling class power. Yet there are those who continue to try to blame this social unrest that exists in the United States somehow on the regressive left or social justice warriors or some war on free speech. Now this isn't to say that there aren't violent 
elements, extreme elements, criminal elements on the left, but the numbers just don't add up. Now, this isn't saying that everyone who holds conservative views is somehow responsible for the actions of this radical few. But it does seem reasonable to ask for those on the right to clarify their opposition to such actions and also to take care that they're not being apologists for these groups. I get the feeling from the responses, from the questions, the comments that people are leaving on this channel that somehow people are seeing the response to this unchecked history of white supremacy uh, as the justification for that same history of white supremacy. It's like this which came first, the chicken or the egg, when if you look at the situation reasonably, this system of white supremacy has existed again for 300 years and the fact that people are now starting to respond to it in ways that might be quite aggressive, we can't say that that aggression then somehow becomes the cause of white supremacy. It just doesn't make sense. Now, it doesn't mean that we have to condone the actions used by any particular group. We should, however, recognize them as reactions to a pre-existing condition. And that includes white supremacist ideologies that are still firmly held and have material effects in the present. I think certainly unless one is actively engaging in the dismantling, the reversing, the condemnation, the disempowering, exposing as a destructive and divisive force, or otherwise diminishing or mitigating the effects of white supremacy, one might question their motives in criticizing the attempts of others to do so and writing these struggles off as invalid, unjustified, criminal, radical, or aggressive. So that's it for this video. Like it if you like it. Share, comment, subscribe. This is Reg signing off. Love yourselves. Peace. And I love myself.